This is section 24, one-way ANOVAs. So an ANOVA, the acronym ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. Now, we talked in section 22 and 23 about the t-test. Um, which tests the null hypothesis regarding the differences between the two means. Now, the ANOVA, or the Analysis of Variance Statistical Procedure, performs what is called an F-test. Now, an F-test can be used to test the difference or differences among two or more means. Now similar, uh, you know, like the t-test, it can be used to test the difference between two means. Uh, and when this is done, the probability will be the same as the probability that would have been obtained had you used the t-test but the value of f will not be the same as the value of t. That is an important uh, concept to remember. So let's look at how, what an ANOVA can do. So the ANOVA can be used to test the differences among more than two means in one single test. Now if you had a t-test, you'd have to repeat the, uh, the test several times, uh, but um, in an, an F-test or with the ANOVA, the ANOVA can be used to test the differences among more than two means in a single test. Now let's look at example one on your text, uh, page 127. So a new drug for treating migraine headaches is tested on three samples selected at random from a population. The first group receives 250 milligrams, the second group receives 100 milligrams, and the third group receives a placebo. Uh, and the average pain reported for the three groups is on a scale of 0 to 20, with 10, 20 representing the most pain, which means that 0 uh, would possibly represent pain-free. Now, this was determined by calculating the means. And so now we have the means for group 1, group 2, and group 3. And you can see that group 1, who received 250 milligrams, uh, their mean is a 1.78 on the scale. Uh, the group 2, which received 100 milligrams, their um, average pain uh, on the scale was indicated with a 3.98. And group 3, which represented a placebo, as you can see, the um, their mean uh, it, on the scale of 0 to 20 is that a 12.88? So now when we talk about differences between and uh, differences among the means. So what we're talking about is the difference between groups one and two, the difference between group one and three, and the difference between groups two and three. So this is how uh, if, if we were to perform separate t-tests, we would have to perform three separate t-tests. But all of these differences can be tested with a single ANOVA. So we can use one single F-test to test the significance of this set of three differences. So let's talk about then how we would report the, uh, the results uh, of the F-test for example one. And we would say the differences among the means was statistically significant at the 0 0.01 level. And we report our F and we also report our degrees of freedom. Now, 
uh, the method of reporting the results of, of an ANOVA is sometimes uh, similar to uh, reporting the method for the t-test. Um, now, if we look at the statement, indicates that there there is a um, you know a a uh, significance difference um, with p uh, less than point. Zero one, so the null hypothesis can be rejected at the point zero one level, and and remember the null hypothesis for this test says that the set of three differences was created at random. By rejecting the null, we're rejecting the notion that one or more of the differences was created at random by sampling error. Now the test does not indicate which of the three differences is responsible for the rejection of the null, but at least one of the three differences is statistically significant. Now let's look at the uh, example number uh, 3, which is table 1 on page 128. Now this shows another way to uh, report the results of F-test conducted with ANOVA, um, and this is called an ANOVA table. Uh, the test, the table shows the same values of F, the degrees of freedom and P that were also reported, and it shows the value of the sum of squares and mean squares. Uh, which are other values or intermediate values obtained in the calculation of F. So if you divide the mean square of, of 315.592 by the mean square of 5.370, you will obtain the F. Now I'm not asking you to do that. Um, and, and for most people, the values of the sum of squares and the mean squares are, are very, a uh, very little interest. So the typical consumer is really interested in whether the null hypothesis has been rejected, which is shown through the p value. Now, if you look at the p value, the probability in example three is given in a footnote, which is also very common in statistical reporting. Uh, often it's given in an ANOVA table as well as in the text of the research report. So what we might do is include a statement uh, talking about the difference among the means being statistically significant or not significant, um, and that we also might then refer the reader to the table, uh, the ANOVA table, um, as you see on, on this slide. Now, the ANOVA can be used uh, with a large number of means. So let's look at this. The single ANOVA can determine whether the null hypothesis for this entire set of six differences should be rejected. And if the result is not significant, the, the researcher is done. If the result is significant, the researcher can, can conduct more tests to determine which specific difference is significant. Now, um, a number of different tests, uh, which always don't lead to the same conclusions, some that you may uh, may use are, um, are uh, Tukey's, or, uh, and, and this is actually, again, uh, beyond something that we would use within an introductory, uh, basic statistics course. Uh, so, uh, we, we would not, um, we would not, uh, encounter that in this particular, uh, text. Now, when we are looking, uh, you you probably also though would want to uh, realize that you could you could understand them because all of them still have a probability level, a p value, uh, which would be used to determine significance. So let's look at um, our four methods of teaching computer literacy used in an experiment, which resulted in four means, and this produced six differences. Um, when there are four means, there are six differences among the pairs 
of means. So the examples we have been um, discussing uh, are known as one-way ANOVAs, or also single-factor ANOVAs. What we're talking about on this is that we're uh, the that the participants are only classified in one way. So, uh, for example, in example one, they were classified by a drug group to which they were assigned. Uh, and in example four that we just looked at, the four methods of teaching computer literacy, they were classified by method of instruction to which they were exposed. Now, uh, section uh, 25 will introduce and discuss uh, the two-way ANOVA, which is also known as a two-factor ANOVA, where the participant might be classified in two ways. So the drug group assigned to and perhaps their, uh, their gender, either male or female. And in a two-way ANOVA, uh, allows researchers to ask questions such as, are some drugs more effective for treating men than they are for treating women? Now, I want to come back and say uh, in a previous uh, slide, I talked about that you would have to conduct uh, three separate tests. Now, you cannot uh, conduct the three separate t-tests without adjusting the probabilities for for interpreting T. Uh, and these adjustments are very complex and complicated. They're not straightforward. So when we use this, we this is one of the reasons why we, we talk about using an ANOVA and the single T test, a single F test, I'm sorry, the single F test, because the F test automatically makes all of the adjustments to the probabilities. And you, you as the researcher do not um, have to to do that. Um, so uh, it, it actually uh, is more, well, and ANOVA is more widely used uh, in the difference between the two means. Um, and the t-test is still being taught. Um, usually we teach that in introductory statistics courses. Um, and it is widely used by researchers when only two means are being compared, but uh, now we we normally most most researchers though uh, will go ahead and use an ANOVA, particularly if you are in psychology or any of the so, uh, behavioral um, or psychological sciences. A lot of times you will will be using an ANOVA instead of um, a a t test.